In this part of the training, we will cover building the PBX, focusing specifically on extensions. Extensions are a crucial component of an Astros PBX system, allowing users to make and receive calls within the system. Understanding how to properly configure and manage extensions is essential for setting up an efficient and effective PBX environment. We'll go through the necessary steps and best practices to create and manage extensions tailored to your organization needs. In an Astros PBX systems, there are three main types of devices that can be configured for voice communications. IP phones, these are dedicated hardware phones that connect directly to the IP network and communicate using VoIP protocols. Then you have analog telephony adapters. This is what devices convert the analog signals to digital signals to VoIP signals, right? So you can use your old uh, analog telephone, telephone connected to an ATA. Finally, you have soft phones. These are software applications that run on computers or in mobile phones, uh, providing a virtual phone interface. I have to say that these three are being used in, uh, nowadays. So IP phones are, are seen usually on high profile uh, workers and companies that have a phone on, on their table. Uh, for places where an IP phone is fragile, you can use an analog phone, it's much more robust. And soft phones, I think most of the people in these days are using soft phones rather than hard phones. In PJC channel configuration, there are two main sections, the basic configuration and the advanced configuration. Under the basic configuration, you start defining the endpoint. The endpoint is the main PJC entity and its parameters. Transport associates a transport protocol like UDP or TCP with the endpoint. Authentication sets up the authentication mechanism for the endpoint. And AOR specifies how an endpoint can be contacted. AOR, AOR means address of record. Registration contains settings for an outbound registration. So this is the basic configuration. Under Advanced configuration, you may configure an ACL, an access control list, to limit the IPs being allowed to, to connect to, to your asterisk server. Um, Identify that matches a specific endpoint to an IP address for authentication, useful for IP authentication. And domain aliases allows defining aliases for a specific domain name. These various entities and options allow configuring and customizing the PJSIP channel behavior as per requirements. We are going to see in the lab how to configure PJSIP and the phones uh, to connect to your Asterisk PBX. In the basic configuration of PJSIP on Asterisk PBX, the first step is to define the transport protocol. This slide demonstrates how to configure the UDP transport protocol in Asterisk. The transport is defined by the transport UDP section with type set to transport and protocol set to UDP, right? The bind parameter specifies the IP address and port number on which asterisk will listen for incoming connections. In this example, asterisk will listen uh, to all available IP addresses on the port 5060, which is the standard SIP port. In the basic configuration, we need to define the authentication method. Here, we have two entities, E1 and E2, two endpoints, both using user pass authentication type. So the authentication will be the digest using username and password. The username is set to E1 and the password is set to super secret. Similarly for E2, the username is E2 and the password is also super secret. Uh, this configuration sets up two user accounts with different usernames, but the same password for authentication purposes. Continuing in the basic configuration, we have two definitions of address of record. Address of record is a place where you're going to add your contacts. So we are setting a maximum number of contacts for each phone for E1 and E2. 
So uh, sometimes if you want to create something like a permanent registration, you can actually add a um, specific IP address on a specific uh, contact for each device. In this case, we are doing this dynamically during the configuration, but we are limiting the maximum number of connections to two. So in this case, you can have at least at maximum two phones registered in the same endpoints. So now continuing on this basic configuration, we have two endpoints defined, E1 and N2. For E1, the transport is UDP. Uh, we are using a server on DigitalOcean, so we need to set up NetRaversal. For NetRaversal, we have a specific chapter, but for now, let's use these four parameters. Force our port equals yes. This is symmetric SIP signaling. RTCP, RTP symmetric equals yes, is RTP symmetric signaling. Um, rewrite context, yes, to rewrite the external contact on the system. And direct media equals no, so the media has to go to, asterisk cannot go peer to peer. This is what we need to run our endpoints uh, behind a net device. So these are here now, just copy these instructions when doing the labs. And later we are going to learn uh, how NAT affects asterisk and what we need to do on asterisk to support that. But for now, this for commons will do the trick. <laughs> 